Sheffield State. This this place. So it's a earth, fire, air, and water symbol. And then the exterior, the photographs, the exterior are all different types of emotions. Because this piece is really about photographs are included in the mandala. And behind them are, you know, starboard poets, which is really another uh, remembrance to recycle. Oh yeah, that's such a bad Oh, is that right? Is that what that is? Isn't that nice? You know, nice. My aunt gave me this. My mom gave me this. I wear my family. You know, you know it makes it more special. If you look at it carefully, you'll notice that my hands actually pressed out the water from the paper. I literally lay down the piece of wood, throw paper at it into the cavity which is located there, and then use my hand to press out the face. So if you'll allow me, I'll show you Please. that my thumb actually made this eye. Yeah. Let's uh -huh. see. My finger actually made this impression. So they're much like ceramic pieces or sculptural pieces of wax if you're working in ceramics or in wax where you use your hands to create the organic aspects of the pieces themselves. Interviews and conversations about the meaning of nature and spirituality in our personal lives. And so I'd like to say a special thanks to the museum and to, of course, Brian and Christy for their very wonderful help through this entire process and to the staff, Jenny, and all of the other individuals that were a part of today. Um, I'm here specifically to answer your questions. And they've told me, they promised me that you have many. <laughs> and so I would appreciate if you'd step forward and ask me anything that you would like. I will tell you the truth, no matter what you ask. <laughs> That's my, it's my solemn promise, to be honest. The ground. You can see it now, can't you? So there I am in Los Angeles with my car, driving around looking for tree fragment. And you can imagine downtown Los Angeles, there's not a lot. There's even less today than there was when I produced these pieces in the 1980s. And there I am, you know, collecting wood in the back of my van and taking it in my studio and letting it dry for six months before I actually attach paper to it. So you have the root system here above, which creates the crown, if you will. And here is the paper once again. And there I am throwing the paper at it packing the paper, and once again using my hand, you can see it again, you can see the form here with my thumb, to create the facial, for, the facial features in the Mexican Mesoamerican culture, which is the symbol of woman as well. And I placed a crown on her because every woman deserves one, am I right? Yes. And of course I, I, I gave her a breast because she has children and she must be able to feed her own children. And I sometimes think of this one as Pele. How many people know Pele? Yes, the, uh, the island goddess of the volcanoes because of the purple at the bottom and the red as it flows up. And if you see all the markings on this particular piece, I use the butt of a brush to create these marks. Can you see the marks? You can imagine me laying the butt of a brush into the paper as it's wet. And this always reminds me of, you know when you're flying in a plane, like I just went from LA to here and tomorrow I'm going back to LA, you see the, uh, the uh, grasslands, you see the uh, fields, and they have these rows in them. So this really is a reminder of the earth to me. Well, it can be dressed like, a, like a, a paper doll. You can actually take the flags off and redress the object. And uh, this particular object, uh, this time, for this particular exhibition, I especially redressed it in environmental issues. And if you take a look at it carefully, you will see that the photographs that are in the central mandala are also replicated here in the Ferris wheel and also in the three-dimensional altar that is on my right. So the photographs kind of float around the room. Indigenous culture kind of floats around the room. If you take a look, you'll see indigenous culture here as well. And the Ferris wheel actually works. I'm the only one who can do this. <laughs> Just remember that, okay? It actually works. 
And the story behind this is kind of interesting. I was painting. I had made the, the Earth Day sculpture. And I had been doing a series of paintings, which you can see on the wall. These are actually the quintessential elements of the paintings. And one night I dreamt that I went to an art show. It was my art show. I was in a group show. Artists dream about this all the time. <laughs> they can't help themselves. Of course, it wasn't a solo show. It was a group show. I went to the show, and I knew I had a piece in the show. And I went to see my piece. Artists go, and they check out the lighting and the placement of the piece so that they can be upset with the curator. Right? Okay? And so I go to the back of the room and I look for my piece and sure enough, what do I see? I see this object. The Ferris wheel made of Tinker Toys. It's the only time in my life I've ever actually dreamt of a final piece. I, I often dream of myself painting or working with objects, but very, very rarely have I ever been in a position to dream about an actual finished object that was in an exhibition. This individual, my new friend, said that they are three-dimensional. How do you make them three-dimensional? The Native American circle standing tall as a man, standing, you know, being what the conscientious, courageous, honorable, right? <laughs> Compassionate, caring, loving, standing as a man. You know, women in, in this room know what I mean. A man who stands tall. And this is actually the symbol of this for me. Yeah, there you go. Stand up. <laughs> Chest <laughs> out. Let's go. <laughs> So I found this, um, as I was looking for trees in downtown Los Angeles, I found this felled um, pine tree, and I couldn't put my arms around it. The trunk was huge, and someone had just simply felled this tree in Los Angeles. There's very few trees of that size in LA. And it was laid down on this large parking lot, asphalt parking lot, all by itself, dying along, if you will. It was dripping with sap. It was a heartbreak to see someone fell a tree of such beauty in a place where there's so few like it. And the only thing that I could fit into my car was one branch. This is a branch of the tree. It tells you how big the tree was. And I took it with me, and I decided to revive it and bring it back to life, if you will. And so this is all handmade paper with procyon dyes once again, and gold leaf. You can see the gold leaf. So I'm honoring the tree remembering it. I assume that the rest of the tree was mulched or maybe just thrown in a dump. That's probably what happened to it. And what, 30 years later, the piece is still alive, if you will, the tree is still alive in my memory.